We live in interesting times. Today's stories. Putin says Russia and Saudi agree to renew oil output cuts. Putin says war will continue so long as Ukraine government stays. Merkel says she hopes G20 helps smooth U.S. and China trade relations. President George H.W. Bush dies at 94. Respect uh, senior George Bush because he was a great president. Political appointee under Bush remembers the late president. Uh, everything he did uh, was, had a little bit of a sense of humor behind it. Plus, Ian Cinema actors and filmmakers share with our junior correspondents tips on making values-based movies. Hello everyone, I'm Ace Ramirez, bringing you stories from around the globe. And this is Eagle News, Washington, D.C. <music> President Vladimir Putin said Saturday that Russia and OPEC kingpin Saudi Arabia had agreed to renew a pact on oil production cuts as crude prices slump on global markets. Following talks at a G20 summit with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, Putin said the world's two biggest exporters of crude have agreed to extend their agreement. There was no immediate word from the Saudis, but financial markets have been expecting the deal to be renewed between the kingdom and non-OPEC member Russia as the cartel prepares to meet next week in Vienna. Russia has for years been cooperating with the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, or OPEC, helping to engineer a rebound after a 2014 oil price slump. But since reaching four-year highs in October, oil prices have plunged around 30 percent as worries about falling demand in a slowing world economy have taken their toll. Да, у нас есть договоренность продлить наше, продлить наше соглашение. И вопрос окончательной точки нет, не поставлены по поводу объемов, но мы вместе с Саудовской Аравией будем это делать. И какая бы цифра окончательно не появилась... On Thursday, the price of New York crude ducked below $50 per barrel for the first time in almost 14 months. The contract closed the week Friday down 52 cents at $50.93 per barrel. <laughs> Russian President Vladimir Putin said Saturday he saw no end to the conflict in eastern Ukraine as long as the current authorities remain in power. Действующее руководство Украины не заинтересовано в урегулировании этой ситуации вообще, а тем более мирными средствами. Это партия войны. И пока они у власти, все трагедии подобного рода, война будет продолжаться. The conflict pitting Russian separatists against Ukrainian government forces is estimated to have claimed more than 10,000 lives, one-third of them civilian, since it broke out four years ago. The war has strained relations with Western powers. They blame Putin for starting the conflict in 2014 when his forces annexed Crimea, laying the ground for Russian separatists to seize cities in eastern Ukraine. Heavy military spending and the loss of vital industries in the separatist regions have weighed heavily on Ukraine's economy and Kiev has received only around half of a $17.5 billion rescue loan from the International Monetary Fund because of the slow pace of reforms that include anti-corruption measures. But Putin dismissed Ukraine's economic problems on Saturday, saying, and I quote, it's always easier to blame economic failures on war. He said, it's always the outside aggressor who is guilty. 
German Chancellor Angela Merkel says it is important that conversations between the United States and China at the G20 summit in Buenos Aires bring solutions to their economic relationship and said that she mourns the loss of former U.S. President George H.W. Bush. Warum werde? Wichtig ist, dass die Gespräche, die heute zwischen den Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika und China stattfinden, hoffentlich Lösungen bringen. Denn wir alle, das merken wir, sind ähm, indirekt beeinflusst davon, wenn die chinesisch-amerikanischen Wirtschaftsbeziehungen nicht so reibungsfrei lau frei laufen, wie eine Weltordnung das braucht. Und damit sind wir hier werden müssen. Ich will allerdings ganz klar sagen, der freie Schiffverkehr in das Asowsche Meer muss zu den ukrainischen Küsten und Städten gewährleistet sein. Dazu gibt es eine vertragliche Grundlage von 2003. Diese Grundlage muss Russland einhalten. Ich traure um George Bush, den 41. Präsidenten der Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika, als Bundeskanzlerin der Bundesrepublik Deutschland und als eine Deutsche, die ohne die Ergebnisse seiner Politik heute wohl kaum hier stehen könnte. Dankeschön. Coming up, people in Houston and in the U.S. Capitol pay tribute to late President George H.W. Bush. Political appointee under Bush remembers the late president. Eagle News, Washington, D.C. will be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Eagle News, Washington, D.C. Flags flew at half-staff in Washington Saturday as Americans prepared for a week of solemn tribute to George H.W. Bush in his home state of Texas and in the U.S. Capitol a day after the former president died aged 94. Tributes poured in from world leaders in memory of the 41st U.S. president who guided America through the end of the Cold War and launched the international campaign to drive Iraqi strongman Saddam Hussein's forces from Kuwait. Many of those same leaders are expected to attend Bush's state funeral alongside President Donald Trump and his wife Melania. Trump was notably absent from the funerals of the statesman's late wife Barbara and of veteran fellow Republican John McCain. Although the two Republican presidents were in many ways polar opposites, the soft-spoken Patrician Bush reportedly once dismissed the blustering New Yorker as a, and I quote, blowhard and even voted for his rival Hillary Clinton. Trump paid the late leader a gracious tribute, saying he had, and I quote, inspired generations of his fellow Americans to public service. Trump tweeted, and I quote, his accomplishments were great from beginning to end. Declaring a national day of mourning for December 5th, when the federal government and New York Stock Exchange will close in Bush's honor, Trump also signaled his respect by calling off a press conference planned at the G20 summit in Buenos Aires. Funeral arrangements are still being finalized, but will include a commemoration in Houston where the Bushes lived for years. Then in Washington, where he will lie in state in the U.S. Capitol between Monday and Wednesday, and then back to College Station, Texas, where the Bush Presidential Library is located for his burial. A statement from a joint military task force supporting the state funeral promised a first-class tribute, complete with musical units, color guards, honor cordons, and body bearers. Bush, who died Friday in Houston, surrounded by friends and family, was a decorated World War II pilot, skilled diplomat, and one-time CIA chief who saw his son George follow in his footsteps to the Oval Office. From former Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev to current heads of state, leaders praised Bush both for his strength and his moderation, as well as the commitment to internationalism, 
typified by his assembling of a global coalition to oust Iraqi invaders from Kuwait in 1991. A political appointee in the administration of George H.W. Bush remembers the former president after his death, John Patty, once a White House staffer during the Reagan administration when Bush was vice president, who later served in Bush's Department of Labor, cites the late president's accomplishments in the Gulf War and his diplomatic abilities during the fall of the Soviet Union. Bush had a, um, a, a great sense of, of decorum and humbleness about how he went about all of his business. Um, he, as I described earlier in the homeless story, uh, everything he did was, had a little bit of a sense of humor behind it. Um, I think Mrs. Bush perhaps had a little bit a role in that of helping him keep his perspective on, uh, on how life really unfolds for most people in America. Well, I think there have been many times all through George Bush's career where he's noted that in many cases uh, a, a politician will put himself first, but a statesman will, statesman will put, him, put his country first. And I think that that really sums up um, George Herbert Walker Bush and his ability to grasp a national interest at the same time incorporate those needs of not only his fellow countrymen, but also recognizing America's place in world leadership. I think the most important thing that he did, obviously the Gulf War was an important point. No president beginning or in any time has pulled together a coalition, including the Chinese, including the Russians, to have an invasion of another country for uh, because of an aggression. So that is an enormous accomplishment for George Herbert Walker Bush. I think the second most important accomplishment for George Herbert Walker Bush was the delicacy and the humbleness that he approached the end of the former Soviet Union and the Soviet satellites. I believe George Herbert Walker Bush, for many reasons, was perhaps the last what I call civics book president, where after the election is over, everyone comes together, my president right or wrong. Uh, he, he had a great sense of humor. Uh, he had a great sense of purpose. Um, he was, you know, pretty much what you saw all the time, which I think in many cases these days perhaps is not always the case with many of our national politicians. I think when we come back, IN Cinema actors and filmmakers share with our junior correspondents tips on making values-based movies. Eagle News Washington, D.C. will return shortly. Washington, D.C., I'm Ace Ramirez. Winners and nominees of the recently concluded Excellence in Visual Media Awards International, or EVM Awards, share with our Eagle News Junior correspondents some very useful tips on how to create values-based films and maybe even get a chance to win an award for it. Arjen Andrade, Seth Paras, David, and Sara Cusio with the report. From the Awards International 2018 We are one with 25 It's red carpet season for independent films at the Excellence in Visual Media Awards International in Los Angeles, California. These films focus on values-based themes relevant for all ages. But what we want to know is how these stories positively influence the youth. A ticket to the show granted access to the popular Microsoft Theater as well as to an evening of Hollywood-style entertainment at the EVM Awards International. How is it like being at the famous Microsoft Theater? It's very, very cool to be here inside the Microsoft Theater because, you know, there's a lot of um, award shows that happen here, a lot of concerts. It's amazing. It's so pretty here. It's fun. It's fun. You're amazed of how beautiful this theater is. 
I feel like a superstar, even hey. though I'm not a superstar. Like we're in the red carpet, the Oscars, right? <laughs> oh, I love it. I've been here once around this area, but I've never been inside. It's actually really pretty and really beautiful. Why, why is it important for you to attend the EVM Awards? Well, for us, because um, it's, it's an interesting event because it's everybody from around the world where we get to see everybody's work and we get to appreciate it and support them. And to see all the talent that Glacier and Crystal has nowadays. There are so many people here today. I wanted to know where they came from and how much fun they were having. Where are you from? I'm from North San Diego area. San Diego also, the fine city. I'm from Long Beach, California. I'm from San Fernando. How fun is it dressing up for the red carpet? You know, it's so fun because it's, you know, you get to dress up all nice. It's extremely fun. I like to get dressed up. This is our first time being on the red carpet and dressing up. So thank you for the opportunity. It's, it's fun. I like dressing up, so this is one of the opportunities that we can dress up. Oh, it was really fun. I dressed up with my friends and we all got ready together. So it was really, really fun. My wife is the one who dresses me up and I tell her to pick clothes that are uh, appropriate for the occasion and as you can see she picks me up what do you think pretty well right as filmmakers cast and crew members why moviegoers should be interested in the films being showcased in the EVM awards what advice would you give a young person who wants to work in cinema what uh, is important is uh, you have you, you need to have a passion you have the heart and to dedication. and dedication um try it you don't know if you never try, right? Um, I would say get involved at a very young age. Um, you know, uh, my daughter, um, she's uh, been acting with me the last two years, and she started at the age of uh, nine. My advice to that young person is to do it from the heart, right? Really um, put your heart and soul in what you're doing and, and understand your purpose. Storytelling is a very powerful tool in um, conveying a message and, and and expressing an idea. So hang in there, um, even though it gets hard, usually the things that are hard are the things that are worth it. Take the leap. Don't be afraid. You'll be afraid only for the first 10 seconds, and after that, it's bliss. Be prepared to work. Once you learn the skills, once you learn the disciplines, that's when it starts becoming fun. It'll be hard work. It, yes. yeah, it was Definitely. hard work, but it's a lot of fun if you could discipline yourself and have patience with the whole process. The EVM Awards have gone international, with entries hailing from such countries as the United States, Philippines, Australia, China, and Japan. What do you want viewers, especially young people, to learn after watching the film? Oh, the message of the film is uh, you may lose everything, including your memory, but never lose your faith in God. We hope that uh, they learn that to hold you know, hold on to their faith um, and, and to also share their faith because you never know who you can inspire and motivate um, throughout the, the course of their life if they're going through problems. What film were you in? I'm in the film of Sons and Brothers. What has your experience been like after working on this project? My experience has been very shocking to be um, our, our my best um, child's performer because I was never, this is like my first ever film especially in part for the church it's been it's been a roller coaster of a ride um, lots of ups and downs but we were able to get through them all um, I've never been a part of a movie before so hopefully it won't be the last time whether you win an award or not it's all about the experience Wow that was the best award show I've ever been to and for some of us the only award show we've ever been to we'd love to stay for the post award celebration but unfortunately cannot because we have school tomorrow. So, from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles, California, this is Ariane, Sarah, Seth, and David reporting for Eagle News. And we are one with 25. Thank you, junior correspondent. Great job, you four. That is today's Eagle News, Washington, D.C. Join us tomorrow for stories that matter to you. Visit our websites at eaglenews.ph and eaglenewslive.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash Thank you for watching. I'm Ace Ramirez. I'm one with 25.